chapter 7 Gauss elimination and yes variance solving a linear system occurs very frequently in computational mathematics and in various engineering simulations the main subject of this chapter is to study the use of Gauss elimination to solve such systems. You will also study finite difference methods for the numerical solution of boundary value problems. Let's go to section 7.1 Systems of Linear Equations. Consider a system of n linear equations in n unknowns as given in this equation. Such a system of linear equations can be written into a single metric equation Ax equals b. A is the coefficient metric, x is the unknown vector, and b is the source vector. Uh, such systems can be solved by using a direct solver or an iterative solver. Here we have um, uh, various uh, direct solvers, L factorization, LL transpose, and QL SVD, singular value decomposition, mostly based on factorization. These algorithms are harder to optimize and parallelize. And they are numerically robust, but uh, higher algorithmic complexity. That means it's computationally uh, expensive. For iterative solvers, we can get here stationary and non-stationary. Yeah, stationary means that some parameters are uh, determined and not changed during iteration. And these are uh, stationary methods, Jacobi, gauss Seidel, as well, and symmetric as well. And for non-stationary methods, a conjugate gradient and meanless, GMLess, and QML, and so on, these algorithms are easier to optimize and parallelize and uh, low uh, algorithmic complexity. So it can be solved more efficiently. However, uh, there can be a, a convergence issue. Iterative solvers will be treated in chapter 9. Uh, there is a part of um, do uh, make analysis to okay, non singular matrices. We uh, considered this portion in chapter one. Now we'll see again on M by M metric, a square metric, A is said to be invertible or non singular if there is on the same size metric. B such that AB and BA are simultaneously identity. Uh, such a metric B is unique. So use the unique inverse of A and uh, we can use the notation A inverse. Here is uh, the invertible metric theorem. Of course, this one is also in chapter 1. For a uh, square metric A, the following are equivalent. And the first one is the invertibility of the metric A. So this equivalent theorem is uh, uh, expanding the definition. So usually um, equivalent theorem is kind of expansion of uh, definition. For 
the invertible metal theorem, this bold-faced uh, lines are more frequently used. So we'll see only uh, these lines. Once it is invertible, then it's same as now columns of A are linear independent. And the homogeneous equation has only the trivial solution. The equation A x equals b has unique solution for every choice of b. The number 0 is not an eigenvalue of a and determinant of a is non-zero. Uh, here is an example. a is an m by m metric and eigenvalues of the metric are lambda i, then determinant of a is the product of eigenvalues. We considered this claim earlier, and you can prove it quite easily. Okay, now we have this subsection, numerical solutions of differential equations. Now consider this uh, model problem and minus u sub xx plus cu equal f and x is over an interval ax to a bx. Now at left edge point a boundary condition is given and another boundary condition is given at the right edge point. For this problem to have a um, unique solution, uh, we need this condition C and beta non-negative and the addition is positive. To solve this problem, we need a numerical discretization. And there are three steps, partition, uh, applying finite difference methods and assembly. Uh, let's go through step by step. Partition is select NX equally spaced the grid point on the interval. Uh, in fact, NX plus one points from zero to NX. The number of sub interval is NX. Xi is defined Ax plus I Hx. Hx is now the subinterval length. Okay, Ui is a value of u at Xi. And now in second step, we uh, try to the drive the uh, find difference method. It follows from the Taylor series that uh, here minus u sub xx at xi can be uh, this uh, uh, formula plus error term. So we learned this one in chapter 4. And so the central second order finite difference scheme for u sub xx at xi. Uh, becomes uh, this. Okay. Now we uh, try to get algebraic system by saying uh, this formula. So uh, for each point xi, okay, in the beginning, this equation, and at each point, we try to approximate this one by using the finite difference technique and evaluate so that that becomes ui and that becomes f sub i. Okay, and then uh, we try to multiply. Okay, on the bottom we have hx squared, so we multiply hx squared and reorganize to get uh, this equation. Uh, easily, uh, you can get uh, this equation at each point. Okay. 
Now, okay, this one is defined at all point. Now we consider left edge point. Yeah, that is now x0 and there is x1, now x2 and so on. If we consider the equation at this point, then now there's i is 0, u i minus 1 must be u minus 1, so it becomes this one. Now, now however, u i minus 1 doesn't exist. u i, that is at this point, u value will be u 0, that is u 1, now u minus 1 is a kind of a ghost value and outside of the domain. But anyway, we can define this equation and like this one at the left edge point and we have to deal with this term. Okay, let's try to do that. Uh, by using the boundary condition, we can replace this one uh, with uh, some uh, meaningful value. Okay. Okay. Now, at a uh, left edge point, u sub x can be uh, approximated with uh, u1 minus u minus 1 over 2 hx. This is also a central second order scheme and the corresponding error uh, becomes like this one. So we use this one uh, for this boundary condition at the left edge point. Then again, this one is replaced by that, and then we multiply 2h and reorganize. Mm, okay, this one is um, um, okay, so that we have that on only um, change the uh, order and we reach at this one 2h multiplied and at the center and now minus u sub x is now u sub, u sub minus 1 minus this term so that is exactly this one and 2hx is multiplied to become this term, right? Now, we have this equation, okay? We have this equation from boundary condition, and earlier at the point, we have another equation from the differential equation. If we add these two equations, then one is minus u sub minus 1, the other one has u sub minus 1, so that if you add these two equations, then u sub minus 1 will disappear. So that's here we have the result. So uh, at the point, uh, we have this equation. So it's actually the same way at the right end point. Okay. Uh, if we make this uh, continuous so that, let's say, that is xn, then at this point, uh, we need, uh, we'll have from such equation, we'll have xn plus 1, so it is a ghost grid value, and uh, using the boundary condition defined at the right edge point, now we can eliminate we can replace this value so that mm, now we can get the, another equation. Mm, exactly, we can do that. Here we summarize the derivation. So we have here a, a equal b, u is a unknown uh, vector. Now dimension is m plus 1 times m plus 1. So this line in the algebraic system, each row is corresponding to a grid point. So this row is corresponding to x0, 
now there is x1 and then the last one is uh, corresponding to xn which is uh, b sub x okay now uh, so at x0 this equation is made we already got that one this quotient for u0 and minus 2 over there right? and in here the interior points uh, there's no connection along with the boundary condition so that this one is used as minus 1 2 plus h x squared c and minus 1 so we will we'll have minus 1 this term and we have minus 1 that is exactly this um, here for interior points and then now for the right edge point uh, similarly we can get an equation and from the equation we have that okay now for the right side again this one it corresponds to x0 that is from the right side of uh, differential equation that comes from boundary condition here and this one and that one but for interior points all you have one term for the right side h squared f sub i here but for boundary points we have extra term um, from the boundary condition okay so we have nx plus 1 times nx plus 1 system such a technique of removing ghost grid values is called outer bordering okay. now let's try to consider uh, the differential equation with uh, some different uh, Dirichlet, different boundary condition for example such a Dirichlet uh, boundary condition so at the right edge point now function value the solution is given only uh, some unknown boundary condition is given at the left edge point so we have to deal with now that one but this one is already uh, known so that we may apply okay let's try to consider the grid points okay for interior points that must be the same as earlier now also for this left edge point and also we'll use the same technique and the outer bordering technique to get an equation and here the bottom line is for an algebraic system in each row correspond to a grid point so therefore each point we are trying to get a row in the algebraic system so the, the same because and this problem is the same from here to there but for last one the solution value is given so that we don't have to apply the differential equation so here that means that we don't have to use this equation at the last point because already function value is known right? okay so therefore that one the corresponding equation will be now here last unknown is un once we consider that one as a part of unknown then is already given u b at b u value is already given that is equation for that point so we can now formulate an algebraic system along with this one okay so that the 
metric side is the same as earlier, but now last one. And earlier, these are the same, but for the last one, we can deal with this one. Okay, that one is the given equation. So here, there's one. Then, now, unknown vector, once here, there is a multiplied. Then, now, here, yeah, that is from u0. And then, now, u and x. Then, this rho and color multiplication will make u n. And right side, we didn't apply the differentiation so that this part is 0. But from boundary condition, we have u sub b. So the only the value is u sub b. This multiplication is making u n. And now, that must be same as u b. Right? So that automat automatically, when you solve this system, then at the right edge point, the unknown must be the same as given function value. Okay, okay. but uh, that uh, system can be written uh, along with nx times nx system. Okay, let's see that. Here, um, now, we'll make another uh, uh, formulation for the same problem. For i equals 0 to nx minus 1, the same schemes uh, as in the uh, formula, earlier formula, uh, would be used there. Now, at here, okay, at nx minus 1, in fact, again, uh, we have this one. So that means that, okay, now it goes that this is the right, right edge point. Now, at this point, uh, we have this equation from uh, the, the differential equation. The approximation of this equation gives this one at the point. Now, rather than introducing another equation over there for this one, okay, for this one, we may try to use that value, known value, so that this is now u sub p, and we move it to this one right side, so that that is another equation for that one. Now, already uh, we use the value over there, and we know this value, and we don't need any equation in the system, because we already know that. So here, we end with another system. Now, the size of algebraic system is nx uh, by nx. So that one corresponds to x0, and of course there's x1, and so on, so that the last one corresponds to x and x minus 1. So we ignore the last one in the equation for the last point, because we know the value. And from uh, this one, you see the coefficients of minus 1, and we have that, and then right side, and then u sub b, so that is exactly uh, this one. It's nx minus 1, and then uh, from boundary condition, we have u sub b, that is um, used to, to replace that um, unknown. So we end up with this right hand side. So uh, either you can make uh, the, okay, so that you can, so here in, in these two formulations we saw, and the right edge point, the Dirichlet point, uh, 
is involved in the system, so that we make nx plus 1 times nx plus 1. But here, we try to uh, use the value uh, so that for the last point, it is not involved in the algebraic system. Either way, you can organize the uh, algebraic system. Of course, these two systems will produce the same solution. Uh, so that it's not um, uh, used expressly in the system. However, so that uh, eventually this system is uh, smaller, one row smaller. The dimension is one less than earlier one. However, I recommend you to use the early one for every point try to give a row in the algebraic system uh, so that later on once your boundary condition is changed then you can easily modify your code and so that you can manage your code much more easily okay uh, that's the end of the section thank you